So, this is quite the turnaround. You may remember a little video that I released in November of 2021 called Knuckles from Badass to Dumbass. At the time, I put out the video expecting similar responses to my other videos, but uh... Oh boy, was I wrong. Little did I know that it would go on to be the video that defined and built my channel, taking me from about 700 subscribers to 15,000 and still helps to grow the channel even now with a staggering 1.6 million views. That is insane, and I cannot thank you guys enough for giving me a platform to talk about my passion when I really couldn't talk about it outside of YouTube. In the video, I discussed the downfall of Knuckles' character, how he went from being a fan favorite to a complete dumbass to service this new way of writing characters starting from the 2010s. Hell, his Downfall actually began prior to the 2010s with Sonic 06, it's just that it was cranked up to 11 when it came to the modern era. I still believe Tails has gotten it the worst when it came to the character writing in the modern era, especially with his character in Lost World and that fucking cutscene in Forces where he bends over and presents his ass cheeks to Chaos Zero. Chaos Zero. But even with how poorly other characters were treated with the writing, that doesn't excuse what happened to Knuckles. But then, this trailer dropped. Do I look like I need your power? My excitement for the second movie was through the roof. It finally looked like Knuckles was going to be taken seriously. And when I went to see the film, I couldn't take my eyes off the screen. It had happened. My prayers had been answered. The character of Knuckles has been redeemed, finally done some justice. And I guess everyone else was just as excited as I was considering the hefty number of comments I got from people telling me how Knuckles was saved with this film. Of course, we've yet to see his character redeemed within the video games, but we have to take what little victories we can get. But as always, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Let's talk about Knuckles' character in the movie and discuss what makes it so brilliant. Seeing as I've already done an entire character analysis of Knuckles, I don't really see a point in deep diving into his video game character like I did there. So if you want to understand his game character and its fall, or you just want a quick refresher, I highly suggest you give that a watch, and then come back and give this a watch. Please, I, I need the watch time. But before we move on to the main portion of the video, I just want to say that I now have a Patreon, so if you want to go above and beyond with supporting this channel and get some pretty cool perks alongside that, then Patreon is the best way to do that. Seriously though, YouTube pays pennies and have demonetized a few of my videos. But with that said, let's move on. For years, we've waited to see Knuckles get some justice as a character, for him to not constantly be misrepresented as a complete dumbass sitting at the butt end of every single shitty joke. For him to finally be seen the way he was meant to be, and that happened. This film took the character of Knuckles and elevated it beyond my original expectations. Let's start with the look of the character, and I love it. It's the perfect midpoint between his more standard design from the main games and the more exaggerated design from the Boom series. With the standard design, you did kinda have to take Sega's word for it that he was the strong character, and with the Boom design, it only looked like he had strength with barely any athleticism. The movie design, though, is fantastic, where it feels like the best of both worlds, with him exuding both strength and dexterity. On top of this, his character is amazing. The film writers do take a couple of liberties in changing some aspects, but that's absolutely fine since this is a separate universe to the main series. Besides, they nailed the main characteristics of Knuckles, and even had him undergo this really scary thing that Hollywood has been afraid of in recent years, called a character arc. <laughs> I know, it's pretty scary stuff. One of the changes with this interpretation is how Knuckles wasn't just born into the role of the Guardian with all the other echidnas being extinct, but instead lived among them until they were all killed in the confrontation with Longclaw. It's different, but I like it. Plus, it sets up a good reason for some of Knuckles' present traits to exist, such as his honor-bound nature. 
but since he lost people at a reasonably young age, it also explains his naivete when it comes to interacting with others, mainly Robotnik. Robotnik forms a mutually beneficial alliance with Knuckles to kill Sonic, but it wasn't until he heard about the Master Emerald that he decided to play the long game and trick Knuckles in order to retrieve it. This, much like Sonic 3, gets Knuckles to work with him and act as a roadblock for Sonic and Tails. Knuckles just wants to restore the honor in the name of the Echidna tribe that he feels was disgraced by the Owls, and the way to do that is to retrieve the Master Emerald in his tribe's name. You see, it was the Echidnas who forged the Master Emeralds using the Chaos Emeralds, giving them immense power. But the Owls thought that nobody deserved that kind of power, and so they took it upon themselves to apprehend it and guard it from them, leading to centuries of war between the two. Again, it's different, but it's not bad at all and serves as a gateway to connect the stories of Sonic and Knuckles as they both lost their family during the attack against Longclaw. We even see Knuckles empathizing with Sonic as they exchange stories until Tails came along and attacked Knuckles, leading him to believe that Sonic was a dishonorable trickster. Eventually, Knuckles and Sonic confront again, but Knuckles is tricked by Robotnik, who takes the Master Emerald all to himself. Just the way that Knuckles says, But I trusted you! You are my friend! Just hurts, because it feels so real. He genuinely believed that he had a friendship with Robotnik, but to Robotnik, he was but a means to the end. Knuckles in this film puts his thoughts and emotions on display and makes no attempt at hiding them. Like, after he saves Sonic, he shouts about Sonic throwing sand at him during his hour of sorrow, and as funny as that is, you also know that he really is in a state of sorrow. To allow himself to be manipulated like that would feel horrible, especially when he was that close to fulfilling his goal. Plus, this all ties into Knuckles' characteristics of his honor and loyalty. It explains why he went so far with Robotnik in the first place. I also love how he responds to Sonic's question about why he saved him. He simply says, because you saved me, and even then, he still believes that Sonic is somehow using this for some tactical advantage in a fight. And much like the games, Knuckles begins to soften up a bit to Sonic and Tails through interacting with them and understanding them. This whole beach scene is just a great showcase of Knuckles' character and how vulnerable he is. Even the strongest of characters have their weakness. Eventually, he does work with Sonic and Tails to defeat Robotnik and retrieve the Master Emerald. With his goal achieved, he decides to stay with Sonic and the gang, as seen a bit later. This character arc that he goes through is very reminiscent of the character arc that he undergoes between Sonic 3 and Sonic Heroes, wherein he starts the tough character who values his duty as the Master Emerald Guardian above anything else, including people, but eventually, through his interactions with characters like Sonic and even Rouge, learns to soften up a bit and take things a bit easier. He becomes more relaxed and learns the values of friendship in addition to his duties. I discuss the character arc in a bit more depth in the Knuckles character analysis, go check it out if you haven't. While some may say that this character arc was a bit quick, I don't really mind it concluding in one movie. It just means that the focus in future films can shift to other characters that need it, like Tails and Shadow, in similar vein to the way Knuckles got it in this film, so as not to split the focus too much and end up with disappointingly mediocre characters because your focus is split amongst 10 different characters instead of one or two. I do also like the fact that the movie has provided a viable reason for Knuckles to stay with Sonic. Not just because of their friendship, but because they are in constant possession of the Master Emerald, as there is no one place or shrine where the Emerald needs to be right now. One issue with the games is that, starting with Sonic Heroes, they seemingly forgot about the Master Emerald and Angel Island, and so it started to become questionable as to why Knuckles was even hanging out with Sonic in the first place, because there is no way at least based on the character that we've witnessed in previous games, that he would just forget about that stuff because it is an essential part of his character. So I am glad that this won't be an issue with Knuckles' character in the films. Another aspect they absolutely nailed with this movie incarnation is the fact that Knuckles isn't dumb. Yes, he's funny as hell at times, but the humor and his actions don't stem from stupidity because he isn't stupid. 
In fact, the film shows how Knuckles is smart through his navigation of combat, often outsmarting Sonic during these combat situations, which shows just how much more experienced of a fighter Knuckles is. And the film shows us time and time again just how strong Knuckles is, especially in that first encounter where it looked like Sonic stood no chance, or near the end where he punches the Emerald straight out of Robotnik, I'm assuming in reference to Sonic 3. Hell, he even outright states that he is trained in all forms of combat since birth. This is what makes the snowboard scene interaction between Sonic and Knuckles so good. Knuckles has been training for so long and is being shown up by somebody who has no training and is gloating about it, obviously leading to Knuckles getting more and more angry. Surrender the compass! You're no match for me. I've been training for this my entire life. And I have no training at all, yet here I am ahead of you. That's gotta be embarrassing. But going back to my original point, Knuckles isn't dumb, just naive and misguided. His isolation means that he doesn't understand the way a lot of things work or how to navigate social situations. This is something that the video game writing past heroes didn't understand, and so in those cases, he was turned into a complete meathead who was dumb for the sake of being dumb, leading to some very awkward and unfunny comedy that makes you question what the hell the writers were smoking. <laughs> Just get out of here, you stupid dumb animal! <laughs> but here, the comedy works because they play off of Knuckles' inability to understand the customs of other cultures, like with how he broke Robotnik's hand when giving a handshake, or how he was reading Sonic's text messages aloud and kept repeating dot 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 over and over. Hell, this movie even has some of the funniest baseball humour thanks to Knuckles. Seriously, I'm weirdly impressed with this movie's baseball humor. You just want to hit it as hard as you can and then run around the bases. But if my quest ends where I am standing, why run at all? Hope you're ready for my fastball. Your fastball will be dishonored. <laughs> ha! Victory is mine! Hey, no fair! <laughs> I am having the fun! And once again, this humour roots itself from Knuckles' social isolation and lack of understanding, which is why it works. It plays off of his character instead of encompassing it. And all this comes together with a stellar voice performance from Idris Elba where he absolutely smashes it out of the park. What Jim Carrey did to Robotnik in the first film is what Idris Elba has done to Knuckles for the second film. He brings this strong and tribal voice to the character and you truly believe the characteristics portrayed about Knuckles because of this performance. This was a perfect choice for casting that doesn't feel forced for the sake of getting big names on a poster. Looking at you Uncharted movie. Ultimately, I love this version of Knuckles and like I said in the discussion video that I did, this might just be my favourite incarnation of the character. I literally cannot think of a single thing wrong with this version of the character that we've seen. The film perfectly showcases Knuckles as a powerful, determined, strong-willed, militaristic, loyal and stoic character who values his duty and heritage greatly. He cares for the safety of the Master Emerald which will always be a priority, but he does learn to soften up a bit and take it a bit easier, similar to his character arc in the games. He is quite naive and lacks an understanding of social skills from his isolation, but he's driven by good morals and grows as a character through his interactions with others. He was never bad, just misguided. It took well over a decade, but we finally have some justice done for the character. And there will be a whole new generation of Sonic fans from these films that will experience Knuckles in the same way I experienced the character when I was younger. The way that he was meant to be seen, before he was butchered by lazy writing that got the character completely wrong. I cannot wait to see Knuckles more in the third film as well as the upcoming spin-off TV show that's releasing. And I hope that the game writers see the strong positive response that movie Knuckles has received and takes inspiration to retroactively change Knuckles' game character to be as great as it once was in games like Adventure, Adventure 2, Heroes and hell, Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Instead of, you know, the cheap gag with zero plot relevance that we've been getting for a long time now. But as always, 
Only time will tell. Well, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a comment with your thoughts on Knuckles in the film. If you really loved the video, then consider subscribing and maybe even checking out my brand new Patreon if you want to go above and beyond with supporting the channel. Other than that, I do hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next time.